Hi, uh, Mose Masoi here, um, ex-player for Hull Kingston Rovers, currently um, doing rehab for a spinal cord injury. And um, yeah, thanks for having me. Pleasure. You, you've obviously had 12, 13 months now to reflect on that injury and, and that incident and, and how it's changed your life. Um, what have you learned about yourself over the last year and a bit? Um, for myself is um, just learning how to be patient, um, um, just to keep um, staying the grind and keep working hard in my rehab and uh, understand that all the little things will add up and um, will eventually, hopefully, um, will work out to be bigger things and um, help me along the way. Is, is that easy? Is it something you still have to work at? Do you find yourself saying, hey, you know, chill, like, you know, just be patient or... Is if you have that mindset, is it easier to sort of follow through with it? Yeah, um, uh, just like uh, I, I, I having a knee reconstruction, and they say it, it's about nine months of the recovery. And normally, you know, sports people like to push it and say six months or or off. I think that's the quickest I've heard six months um, back to playing. Um, that's similar to what a spinal injury is like. Um, is um it's really crucial for the first eighteen months of your um of re your recovery phase um you, you tend to get a lot of things back in that time and then after that it kind of plateaus so um I'm just thinking eighteen months so it's it's month thirteen now and um yeah I've still gotta just keep chipping away and um and finding new things to do and hopefully um you know the signals get from my brain through my spinal cord down to what I'm what I'm trying to achieve but um you just got to you just got to keep keep at it the doctors obviously and I get I guess they give you that worst case scenario at the start that's part of the gig um but you know there was a possibility you'd never be able to walk again but you have been making some steady progress what what's been some sort of key milestones for you along the journey so far um the biggest thing that I've I've, I've it's just taken me the last 3 months to learn is um to get up off the ground <laughs> might, uh, might sound um, insignificant to other people, but getting off the ground from, for myself is, is massive. Um, um, it's, yeah, like I said, it's taken me three months. So now hopefully I can wean myself off the, the crutches and, um, you know, be, be more, um, more active outside without cut crutches. I mean, you know, if I do take a fall, um, you know, I'll be able to uh, pick myself off off the ground. So, um, yeah, that that was a massive, um, massive thing for myself. There's obviously still some things that you can't do. Um, has it made you grateful for the things that you can? That's it. Um, I think a lot of people go, oh, you know, so unlucky. Um, you know, the injury. When I but when I look back at it, it could have been so much worse. Um, and and like you said, I'm just I'm. I, instead of counting the things I can't do, I, I love counting the things that I can, and um, you know, just um, be able to feed myself my dinner. <laughs> um, you know, the first six weeks when I was in hospital, like um, the nurses were feeding me, my uh, my partner was feeding me, my kids were feeding me, the boys were coming to training, they were feeding me, giving me a drink and everything. So those little things that I took for granted pre-injury, um. You know, those are the little things that I um, really cherish now. And speaking of your partner and your children, um, you know, you're pretty philosophical about it. Uh, how are they coping? How are they adapting? Yeah, um, I, I really feel sorry for them at the moment just because because of COVID as well. Um, but, um, you know, everyone says we've only been in lockdown for a few times, but if, if, I feel like they've been in lockdown ever since I've had my injury. Um, so that they've been having to, to cope with uh, um, getting used to me being um, not being able to do things. Um, you know, um, uh, the kids were spending their time uh, the weekends in, in the hospital with me. So they've, they've pretty much been in lockdown for over a year now. Um, my, my family, but you know, they um, they're really positive. They they bring bring a big smile to my face. And kids kids are adaptable, and um, you know they. are that really um, helped me along the way and, and made my journey so much easier. And have they stepped up to the plate at home? Do they help dad around the house a bit? 
Yeah, yeah, they do. Um, you know, um, you know, when I forget something upstairs, you know, they they, they always like, oh yeah, well, I'll go get it done. And you know, they've, they've been really helpful and just little things that I need. Um, I can't bend over and grab stuff off the ground yet. Um, when I'm standing, so if something falls on the ground, they're always like picking it up for me. Or um, our eldest daughter's um learned how to make coffees, which has been good. Um, they come down and have breakfast, and um, she's made me a coffee for breakfast, which has been been pretty cool. So um, um, yeah, they're they're really helpful. And so your your parents are back here in, in Wellington in New Zealand, obviously. Uh, they've been here for a number of years, and I think your partner's family's in Australia. Uh, how has it been, you know, quite far away from them when something, you know, so significant as, as this injury happens? Uh, have you been able to keep in touch with them? Um, yeah, um, when my injury first happened, um, um, uh, Chris's cousin come over. Um, she come over straight away and really helped out. Um, my sister and then my sister come over a couple of weeks later and a couple of our friends come over too. So we're just really lucky that they come over before the country went into lockdown. Um, so um, they see me at my worst. And, um, but at the same time, there was so much help that they, they helped out so much, like um, Chris and the kids, um, you know, taking the kids to school because we, we still live about an hour away from the, the specialist hospital where I was at. So, um, you know, Chris will, will be at hospital with me all day and then she had to rush back and pick up the kids and now I was driving in. She'll try to drive back and, um, um, you know, bring the kids to see me after school and things like that. So having um, family and friends here, um, you know, in that time was a, was a great help. And how's the Samoan language? I, I hear you've been having a few thoughts about maybe brushing up a little bit. Obviously, not too many Samoans over in uh, in Hull. Yeah, no, um, you know, um, my my daughter asks me all the time, especially when I talk to my parents. So, or what did Nana say, or what did Pa say? And um, I kind of feel sorry because I've been neglecting my own heritage and my language, and um, uh, you know, I just. You know, I, I need to kind of teach them just the basics, so then they kind of get the understanding of um, of Samoa, and um, you know where I'm from. Uh, are there things you can do over in the UK to, you know, to to keep connected to your your culture? Do, do, do you find that tough? Is it easy? Um, it's 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 a little bit tough because there's not many Samoans that live around here. Majority of the the islanders come over here for for rugby or. For, for rugby league, so they're all kind of spread out around the UK. But um, in in uh, Super League, um, we used to have um, when Big Ali was here, we used to have a big um, boys catch up. All the Polys used to get together, um, all the Pacific Pacific Islander boys and the Maori boys who used to go for for dinner at least once a month just to get back to their heritage and, and all, all the jokes and all that kind of stuff, which was which was good and. Um, Big Ali, Big Ali really pushed that um, for the boys. And for you, when you reflect back on your career now, you know, you're in the NRL, coming from New Zealand to play in the NRL for a couple of clubs and over to the Super League, of course, to Osama more at the World Cup. Uh, is there anything that stands out in particular? Because you've obviously had quite an extensive career. You are 31, of course. Um, yeah. It's been, it's just been an awesome journey. Um, you know, I'm just grateful that I've able to play that many years in in a, in, in a game that I love. So um, I think as a whole, just when I look back at my career, um, I'm just like I said, I'm just just grateful, and there's so so many memories with um of heaps of and made a lot of friends along along the way. So um, yeah, I'm just um I'm quite happy with um how it's gone. You know, even with this injury, you know things happen and um. I can't let it get me down because, um, you know, there's so much more in life um, um, left. And, and what did it mean for you and your family when you put on the blue jersey and represented to us some more and, and obviously at a World Cup as well? Oh, it was massive. Um, you know, mum and dad was super proud. Um, you know, my parents still speak fluent Samoan. I think my dad only knows a few uh, English words as well. So... Um, you know, it was it was a big moment for for the family name, and, and um, you know, we we're lucky enough 
at the end of that World Cup to go back to Samoa. And um, that was the first time I've ever been to Samoa too. Um, so um, going back there um, and meeting a few of the family members, um, you know, it was um, quite a proud moment for them to, um, to see um, me uh, representing um, Tor Samoa. And of course your um, injury uh, happened, you know, just a week after basically Michael Fatilofa had a similar incident playing uh, for, for his rugby side over in the UK. Um, you know, a, a crazy thing that doesn't happen too often. Um, is, is he someone you know? Have you met? Have you guys, you know, he's, his recovery has been pretty uh, inspirational to watch. Um, were you, did you see the incident at the time? No, um, at, at the time, yeah, it was exactly a week before I had my accident. And um, uh, I, I remember reading a few articles about it and I, I was sitting back here and I was going, oh, you know, um, at the time it was, it was really sad. And um, um, I was lucky enough to um, tee up with, um, with Michael um, through text message, um, you know, um, earlier on in our um, recovery. And um, I got to FaceTime him a few times and um, I just keep in touch. And But he's, he's going really well. And um, uh, I watch all his um, Instagram videos of him back home and um, he's doing really well. So I'm stoked. Um, I'm stoked to see how far he's progressed and, and um, you know, gives me a lot of hope as well because, um, you know, I'm trying to push to get to where he is now. So he's, he's leading the way and I'm, I'm following. And obviously you asked the young man, Mossy, you've got uh, many years ahead of you. So, so what is next? I mean, the, it sounds a bit crass, but obviously your, your contract is up at the end of the year. The club's been great to you. Rugby league cares. There's, there's been a lot of support, but um have you had a chance? Do you, do you want to even think about what's next at this point? Um, yeah, you know, the past few weeks, I've, I've, you know, after I just really focused on my rehab and my recovery for the first year, and now I've um, started to get a few little things back. I, you know, I've really kind of started to think, you know, I've, I've only got a year left here in the UK, and um, what, what kind of jobs that I can, that I can do after this, and um, yeah, I'm leaning towards a, a lot of mentoring kind of um, counseling kind of jobs and like in the mental health sector. So I've got to start doing a bit of study and hopefully I can get a gig when I get back to um, Australia. Indeed. And, and has, has your experience over the last 13 months, is that sort of, you know, there can be some pretty dark moments. As you say, you're, you're pretty upbeat, pretty philosophical, but um, has that helped you to understand, you know, sort of situations where, where people do find it tough and, and obviously see a way where maybe you can help them? Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's a lot of things that I've learned, um, in, you know, in the last thirteen months. Um, and but to say that I've I've had a lot of support. I've been really lucky. I've been really lucky um, throughout the whole rugby league community. Just everyone in general, we've had so much support, which has made my journey so much easier. Um, you know, it's still hard, but um, just just to know that people are there for you and um, to help you has, has made it easy. And um, you know, when I was in hospital, we, we went into lockdown and a lot of people um, didn't have that, um, uh, what you call it again, didn't have family and friends. We weren't allowed family and friends to come to hospital for the, about two months when I was in there. And um, we had to lean on each, um, on, on the other patients. So it was nice to, it was kind of like we were each other's um, counsellors in, hosp in hospital and sharing, um, you know, our feelings and all that all that stuff, which, which really helps. So really kind of shown me that, you know, um, what I would want to do after 40, uh, after this, um, this injury as well, because um, it was nice to help people and a lot of people helped me. Yeah.